to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Just, just a moment. Let me just have your attention. I, I really, really am honored being here. Um, thank God for his grace while standing I truly want us to honor the angel over this house and his dear wife Asolubi Day Mata thank you hallelujah praise the Lord by the way I must say this I must say this before we sit sir among the many reasons why I truly pray even in the presence of your people that the Lord bless you is because of this gift that you brought to the body of Christ, the school of money. Let me tell you something. We run a school of ministry and this is the eighth year now. And the first time I came across that material, it was so powerful. Um, now, different people write about finances they write about several things but to have a compendium of such thoughts from a kingdom perspective all in one book it may be cheap to you but it was priceless to us hallelujah and it was so powerful till today is one of the reference materials we use in finance in our school of ministry thank you sir Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We have but a few minutes, and even if it's just in 10 minutes, just to communicate one or two things, and we pray tonight, let Jesus be glorified. Are we blessed? Please lift your hands to heaven, and let's ask the Lord to speak to us. Speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus. hallelujah please let's be seated for the sake of time I was really touched to know that this is a kingdom pro um, a, a kingdom conference as you may have known I I was greatly mentored by Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory and he was one of the vessels that God used to inculcate to help me truly understand the kingdom. Um, Jesus said many things about the kingdom and the efficiency of the saints among other things it depends on their thorough comprehension on the kingdom and how it operates praise the name of the Lord now according to scripture there are seven dimensions to the gospel there's no time I will just touch on two of them the gospel that we preach has seven dimensions to it the first the Bible refers to as the gospel of salvation and, and I'm glad that this is a ministry and a commission that is is very intentional about the lost very intentional about soul winning the gospel of salvation now when you when you make reference to the gospel of salvation in the gospel of salvation watch this now the originator 
of the entire discourse is the father himself are we together extending his love to creation and then man more specifically Jesus now being the mediator so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father to man and by extension creation in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus are we together to the intent that if we believe that gospel we receive number one his life and then in addition to his life we are able to be partakers of all the things that we lost from the garden of Eden this is the gospel of salvation so when we talk about the gospel of salvation it has to do with God revealing his love through his son who became savior the object of that love being man and then creation are we still together and that under the gospel of salvation man really does not do anything man is the one who fell short of the standard and he's depending on a God who can help him it was an entire work that was done by Jesus the only thing man does the only participatory role that man has to do or to play is to believe who have believed our report are we together yes so again the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father to man and then creation revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus to the end according to John 3:16 that whosoever believes in him the bible declares shall not perish here's how it says it for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only now we know he's not the one and only he's only the first begotten of we the brethren but as at then he was the one and only begotten son are we together that whosoever believes that person should not perish but have it's not exactly everlasting life by now you know it is the life of God because in truth everybody has everlasting life everlasting life means life without end nobody really ceases to live there is only a change in dimension are we together now when you evangelize you don't ask people will they spend eternity the issue is location where not the possibility the parable of the rich man and lazarus when they finished on earth sin two all of them were still alive and they were very conscious so what jesus came to give was not just eternal life is a quality of life God's kind of life are we together now yes it was a limitation in translation because the Bible largely the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and then the New Testament was a combination of Greek and Aramaic are we together now with a bit of Latin scattered around so the the, the way they would translate scripture is to find the best expression the best contextual expression of the word and so there were limitations here and there this is the gospel of salvation now the assignment of the gospel of salvation is that on hearing the message it should help man comprehend the depth of the love of the father are we together scripture declares behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us in that through Jesus now he has made us to be called sons of God are we together so now we are sons of God the end of the gospel of salvation is that we be saved from what eternal damnation that came through sin not just the sins we committed alone primarily the sin of man are we together Adam now are we together now but if this is the only dimension of the gospel that we know we will be saved but never become efficient that is not the only angle to the gospel in fact respectfully speaking it was this incomplete communication of the full counsel of God that has deprived Africa or as a continent of rising to its height in destiny and in prophecy because if the entire scope 
of our understanding of the assignment of Jesus and the entire span of everything God is just the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Now we are saved. What next? This has been the age-long confusion. So people have received that gospel. They have believed that gospel. Many years ago, I did a series on the full gospel. Where it was an attempt to examine the seven major gospels around the Nigerian church. How they came, the imbalances, just to bring context and balance to it. The gospel of salvation is powerful, but that is not the only dimension of the gospel. Because you notice that in the gospel of salvation, there is no responsibility given to man. And right from Genesis 1, let them have dominion. It's not just a language of authority, it's a language of responsibility. Because there is no true authority without responsibility. Authority and responsibility go hand in hand. Are we together? So that leads me to the last dimension of the gospel called the gospel of the kingdom. Now the gospel of the kingdom is another dimension of the gospel. But in the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus is no longer savior dying on the cross. Jesus is king, enthroned and exalted. Man is no longer a sinner just in need of salvation. Are we together now? Man is the citizen of a kingdom mandated with an authority. It is not just the revelation of the father's love to man. It is man's gratitude back to God. Are we, are we together now? So the gospel of the kingdom represents that dimension of the gospel where man now becomes effective, becomes efficient. He can now answer to certain names. You see, believers are named in two ways in scripture. One is based on identification. There are names given to believers, theologically speaking, based on identification. An example we are joined heirs. That is a language of identification. Are we together now? Yes. But there, is, there are names that are given to believers based on function. An example, light. Jesus had teaching at the Beatitudes. He says, you are the light. You are salt. You are ambassadors. You are kings and priests. Revelations 5 and verse 10. We have been made unto our God. These are not just languages of identification. There are languages that connote authority with responsibility. So knowing who we are in Christ, understanding our oneness according to Ephesians 1, 2, 3, that is wonderful as far as inculcating in us the understanding of the love of Jesus and then the reality of our salvation, the salvation of our souls. But it does not stop there. The gospel of the kingdom now begins to introduce us to the responsibility dimension of living. The inability to understand the gospel of the kingdom will eventually produce people who might be genuinely saved, but they will never be able to rise to the position of kingdom influence where they legislate on behalf of Christ, where they establish his purposes on earth. Are we together? Jesus, he brought the gospel of the kingdom. And the moment he began to communicate the gospel of the kingdom, he used a very interesting expression. Here's what he said. Repent! Wow! For the kingdom is at hand. What is the meaning of such a statement? As soon as he talks about the gospel of the kingdom, the first mandate is that you are inefficient until you repent. Repentance is not just a word for sinners. Repentance is a system of realignment. That means use me as a reference and begin to adjust yourself until you find out that you are in line with me. Repent is not a language for just sinners like someone repenting of sins. Repent means to begin to transit until you become a perfect reflection in experience of the character of the Christ. Repentance is the process that makes you like Christ in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. 
So a conference like this, you will be surprised that what is happening right now in God's mind is called repentance. The system of transformation by introducing kingdom truths. You see that? So he now begins to show that there is a relationship between the mind and the belief system of the people and they are being efficient as far as legislating on behalf of the kingdom is concerned this is very powerful the gospel of salvation jesus does everything man receives by faith it becomes a reality the gospel of the kingdom god has a need the need is to see his glory fill the earth to see jesus revealed to see Jesus glorified and the object the only entity that sustains the ability to satisfy that need is man and so as powerful as God is he invests such trust in man and he say man I'm trusting you and I'm counting on you that in and through you my glory will fill the earth in and through you creation all and sundry will know that there is a god that reigns supreme and above all and for you to be efficient in understanding this assignment you will need to repent repentance is a very powerful process it is the process of transition that now helps us to inculcate the belief system of the kingdom philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 for the sake of time i'll just quote quickly the bible says let this mind be in you the word let there means permit this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus so there was a belief system jesus did not just come and represent the purposes of the father because he was the son of god remember he came as a man empty a young boy empty a baby and he began the process of transformation at age 12 when his colleagues were loitering up and down he was there with the scribes and the pharisees learning are we together theologically speaking for the next 18 years we do not hear about jesus again the next time he shows up is a 30 year old gentleman coming to be baptized of john the prophet who we call the baptist john looks at jesus and says behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and John tells Jesus I'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes then Jesus said suffer it to be so that scripture be fulfilled when he dipped him in water and he came out the Bible declares that the heavens open is that true and the Holy Ghost descended upon him in bodily form in the similitude of a dove and then a voice spoke from heaven this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him and from that time he was not just mary's son again he became the christ the anointed of god and he went about establishing the purposes of of the father he gathered a group of people he called 12 disciples alongside many who were interested in that crusade up the mountain and immediately without hesitation his first port of call was not just miracle signs and wonders a few here to publicize him but he now says, sit down we have a, an assignment to do for the next three years his interest was their mind notice how he made apostles he didn't just make apostles by impartation impartation happened in one day but in three years the assignment was repentance the real value of the anointing the real your your level of transformation gives credence to the power of god that is resident upon you the anointing is grossly limited in your life if you are not transformed to have the mind of christ we're dealing with the gospel of the kingdom now the major problem with believers the major problem with god's people is not so much the devil is not so much witchcraft is not so much sorcery is not so much of these things it is the inability to laboriously go through the process of repentance that will make us sustain superior beliefs that will reveal the full potential of the life of god in us ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened 
being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Psalm 82 verse 5. It says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth. The Bible says they are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, are children of the Most High. The tragedy is in the next verse. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Are we still together? Yes. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 Paul was mentoring the church and he says and now brethren I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace I commend you to God to the word of his grace which is able to build you up are we together and then deliver unto you an inheritance among them that are sanctified everybody say repentance the gospel of the kingdom empowers believers to be light, empowers believers to be salt, empowers believers to be agents of national transformation. Can I be sincere with you? And I say it with every sense of honor to the man of God and his wife. Even ministerially speaking, if you do not mentor and mature believers to understand that there are dimensions to the gospel, they will be sound as far as their loving God is concerned, but they will be irresponsible citizens of a territory. Are we together now? They will never be able to take responsibility and then grow to the point where they contend for influence and all of these factors that help believers work practically in dominion. I hope that we'll look at this tomorrow. We're discussing kingdom matters now. The first assignment of a believer who wants to now begin to manifest the kingdom is repentance. Not signs and wonders. Not power. Not miracles. Repentance. The system of submitting yourself to a body of spiritual truth that the Bible calls marvelous light. To the intent that you become like Christ in experience you understand his ways and now you are ready to represent him one one king to be came over to my place and um, he came to fellowship with us a few weeks ago and he told me he was he's going to become the next king now the king in that region died and he was the one they were preparing to be and so he came to see me just for prayer and he told me for the next 90 days from that time nobody will see his face again I said why he said he would have to go through a process of training and that system of quarantine would require that he does not interact with people in the exterior because he will be learning the core ethics of his kingdom the destiny of that kingdom until he dies will be dependent on his level of transformation so he had to go through that level of rigor I said this is it that is kingdom repentance Every idea he's had does not matter at that point. There will be a group of lecturers, kingmakers, who will sit him down and begin to transfer the passion of that kingdom in him. At the end of that lecture, that king will be willing to live and die for his kingdom. Are we together? The reason why it is difficult to represent the purposes of God. And listen, you do not become empowered empowerment for service does not come just at the instance of the gospel of salvation the empowerment you get when you give your life to jesus is for your own build up the empowerment for service comes when you understand the gospel of the kingdom why do you need anointing why do you need prosperity why do you need influence why do you need wealth all of these things are useless until they come as tools of empowering you to manifest as a king and a priest are we together yes so the gospel of prosperity in isolation to kingdom does not profit signs and wonders and miracles and impartation in isolation outside of his connection to kingdom does not profit all these other aspects of the faith life they find their relevance to the degree to which they are connected to kingdom come on the strength of kingdom come 
your pastor will teach you so lavishly about all the financial systems he will help you understand the economic system of god now you are not just a money monger wanting to prosper there is an understanding that sponsors your passion for wealth because it is now a tool for kingdom come if god grants you speed if god grants you breakthrough now you can want to become that politician that governor you are not just looking for a way of feeling relevant there is an assignment that is bigger than you the theme is called thy kingdom come are we blessed now yes to blindly just want to prosper for the sake of prosperity will eventually frustrate you to blindly just want cars no the reference for your desire the reference for your pursuit the reference for your hunger when you understand the gospel of the kingdom, you will be able to defend your prayer request. Why are you asking God to make you a billionaire and you can stand tall without any sense of shame and say because the king's business requires haste. And Zechariah 1 verse, verse um, 20, I believe, 18 now, 17. Cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord, my city's true prosperity shall be feel and i will yet comfort zion so you don't feel apologetic about trusting god for the blessings of god no matter what ignorant people say you are confident you can approach god when you are studying those books on finances you are not feeling guilty because kingdom come is the motivation when you go to fast and you're trusting god to bring you the healing anointing you are not embarrassed about it because you know that the purpose is not just to heal people the healing is only a means to an end. It is to the degree or to the intents that Christ be revealed and Christ be glorified. Listen to me. We only become truly fulfilled in our faith work when we understand kingdom come. And when that becomes the drive, my entire life revolves around kingdom. If I cannot find kingdom represented in my desire, I have no business being there. This should be the justification for your wanting to eat and stay healthy. Why do you want to stay healthy? I'm afraid of death. That's a wrong motivation. Because in life and in death, we are victorious. It's a wrong motivation. So the reason why you want to live long is not because you are afraid of death. It's not because you have piled up treasures for yourself on earth here and you are afraid. No, it's because this body is your pass for your spirit to remain there. And there is a lot that needs to be done as far as kingdom come is concerned. So when you are praying for long life, everything is tied to kingdom. We are going to pray shortly. You know the story of Hannah and Penina in scripture. Are we together? Hannah was trusting God for a child and for a while she would not have a child. Penina had children and Penina kept mocking Hannah. Notice that Hannah's motive had no kingdom attached to it. She just wanted a child to prove to Penina I'm not a man. And God said, no, that's not how you get my attention. But a day came, paraphrasing, Hannah went to God and said, Lord, this is no longer about competition. You need a prophet. Can this womb? She prayed once only once and a child came listen please sit down the day your life becomes connected to and revolves around kingdom then you will be a wonder first to yourself and then to everybody who sees you kingdom the influence of the father jesus revealed jesus glorified creation coming you institutionalize god across a territory So I am saved. I'm born again. But that's not it. That's not all there is. The Holy Ghost now comes. What is his assignment? You see. He now uses scripture. And he begins to cause that process of repentance to be effectual in my life. Now let me tell you repentance takes a long time. A very long time because you are fighting belief systems Romans chapter 10 
12 from verse 1 and 2. I beseech thee, brethren, verse 1 says, By the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. The Bible says it's your reasonable act of service or worship. Verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world. The Greek word world is aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with this age. Every dispensation has the way they think, programmed by Satan, subliminally, environmentally programmed in people. Mindsets and belief systems that cannot allow the purposes of God to be established. It says, but be ye conformed by the renewing in one word, that's repentance. The renewing of your mind. Let me tell you this. There is, there is not much as far as kingdom advance is concerned that God can do with an individual who does not submit to the process of transformation. There's no time to begin to discuss the issue of belief systems. But I have found out from scripture and from experience that the degree to which you are available you don't just come to God and say Lord I'm available that's wonderful but you must also be usable the Bible says to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure that means it is your responsibility to stop people from doubting whether God really called you or not are we blessed so when we talk about kingdom we refer to the fullness of the culture, the governing influence, the modus operandi of heaven, finding expression in the earth. This is what we call the Lord's Prayer. Here's how he said, Our Father. Listen. Listen. This is Jesus teaching. The word, Our Father. Please sit down. Our father, the word Abba. Abba means source. Abba means sustainer. Abba means defender. So when you come to him, he's not saying recite our father. He's saying come with this consciousness that the one you are coming to is Abba. Meaning do not have plan B. Lord, if you fail me, I'll quickly run to that shrine. No, come to him as Abba. Please sit down. Number two, he said, which art in heaven. That means you will need faith in your communication because he is in a domain that is not earthly and not three-dimensional. Which art in heaven means that you will require faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, without faith it is impossible possible to please him for everyone who comes to God has two assignments number one you must believe that he exists then number two you must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him our father who art in heaven number three hallowed be your name listen hallowed be your name means even though even though Jesus is Lord and he's made you a partaker of his life you must realize that your dominion is not absolute dominion your dominion is shared dominion you are who you are because of who he is not that it was an act of your own so maintain the spirit of reverence even though there is liberty in approaching him hallowed be your name and then he says thy kingdom come that means the priority of your prayer should be that his governing influence. You notice he said thy kingdom come in earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So the only way his kingdom comes is when his will is being done. If his will is not done, his kingdom cannot come. And the Bible says his will is done in earth. That first earth being you. not just your environment the earth is you first listen do you know why he's telling you to focus on thy kingdom come because many of the other prayers became necessary because of the absence of the kingdom coming that if you pray if thy kingdom come really happens you will not be able to have any other prayer again that many prayer that we pray are a side effect of the kingdom not coming
ask uncle to give me 10 naira ask uncle to give me 10 naira every day ask uncle to look for a job for me is the lack of a job that necessitates that prayer of 10 naira every day so he's saying i am benevolent you will get the 10 naira but my ultimate is not to keep giving you 10 naira every day ask that the kingdom and its culture and all that the kingdom carries let it find expression if the kingdom comes you will not pray for healing again there will not be need if the kingdom comes you will not because the bible says that the kingdom has an assignment to replicate itself in earth as it is in heaven so there is a reference. Are we blessed? But you see, all these things I have said will mean absolutely nothing to one that the Bible calls regenerate. It comes from the word regene. It's a change of state. You have received the life of God because you believed his report. But stopping there will make you not to be productive as far as the counsel of God and the purposes of God is concerned. And so you have an assignment and you have a mandate to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit as he begins to introduce you to the concept of the kingdom. Where Jesus is no longer a weak savior hanging on a tree. Jesus is the king of the universe where man is not just an irresponsible helpless man no now he's empowered by the Holy Ghost to take responsibility in the gospel of salvation man is resting God is walking in the gospel of the kingdom God is resting man is walking but he's not walking based on his strength he's walking empowered by the Spirit are we blessed? It is lack of the understanding of the gospel of the kingdom that continues to produce the decadence that we see in society. The gospel of the kingdom is the part of the gospel that anybody can relate with even if he's not born again. Because the benefit of the gospel of the kingdom translates into the well-being of not just people but a territory. That people can see the hand of God. The quality of the living of people. Are we together now? By the time the gospel of the kingdom is well communicated, crime rates will reduce. Because you will learn under the gospel of the kingdom that irresponsibility is not a kingdom concept. Are you seeing now? So you will find out that young men now take responsibility. The larger part of society will be full of responsible young men. Because they were indoctrinated by the gospel of the kingdom. That there is excellency in being responsible. Now the government can see there will be statistics to show for it. Whether they are born again or not. That the crime rate has reduced within this region because men and women have found value in knowing that it pays to be responsible there are many pillars i hope that we'll look at that tomorrow our time is gone we have to pray but there are many pillars that the gospel of the kingdom hinges upon and then we have to also understand kingdom advance. Maybe I should just touch on that and then we'll pray. We cannot understand thy kingdom come thoroughly until we understand what we call kingdom advancement. You know, growing up for a very long time, I had a prayer like this. Father, these offerings that are collected, let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom. And I wondered, what does that mean? What is the advancement of his kingdom? Please, if you're writing, write this down. This is a congregation of profound knowledge. Write it down. Kingdom advancement refers to any and every scriptural means deployed. Any and every scriptural means deployed 
to enthrone Christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. Every and any scriptural means deployed to the end that Christ be enthroned first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. That is kingdom advance. So kingdom advance is employing every scriptural mechanism available. Internet, worship, preaching, education, business and finance provided it is a scriptural strategy and the end will be to enthrone Christ in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. It is called kingdom advance. And what you call your assignment is your contribution to that larger picture that's it what you call my assignment or my purpose is the contribution the role that you have to play as far as that big picture of thy kingdom come or kingdom assignment is concerned please look up if you are Mary your assignment is to use your womb and give birth to Jesus that means if you misuse your life you would have wasted your assignment because that womb must be protected and it must be sacred because of Jesus that will come out of it do you know that a person's assignment on earth can actually be to give birth <laughs> yes sir yes sir yes sir Your assignment can be a kingdom financier, for instance. If you're a kingdom financier and you have a hundred million, you'll be surprised how disappointed God will be in you because it's not enough. For someone who is not called to do what you're doing, that may be fine. But God says, hundred million for what? How many things will it build? So you will find out he's pressing you the more and you are wondering. Someone will say, what are you still doing with money? But you realize that you have that assignment that you are supposed to supply financial resources for kingdom advance. I'm just using finances as a case study. If you're supposed to reveal the dimension of God's healing power to cause the nations to come to their knees and you're careless with your life and you do not stay to build capacity and carry that grace to the nations you would have failed and you see assignments are interconnected that means someone's efficiency is dependent on your own efficiency if you are called to be a preacher and you fail someone won't get born again who was connected to your sermon jesus in john 17 had to account for all that was given to him here's what he said he said all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture may be fulfilled i made up my mind that every role that my life would have to play as far as kingdom come is concerned i will spend my life and spend my days playing it efficiently that as far as it depends on me may god not be disappointed that his purposes could not come to pass you see that the goal of this conference is not just for us to receive miracles and signs and wonders that will happen i assure you but this is this is a summit of matured believers it's an attempt to upgrade us through light through illumination to a point where now we understand that we're not just alive for nothing that there is a burden of god that is upon us there are nations depending there is a cry of the spirit even at this time he's still saying thy kingdom come it's not a song we compose. It is an assignment that we accomplish. Africa is in desperate need for the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Our nation, as you know, is in desperate need for the manifestation. And we should not stop until we see our nation and our territory reflect the life and the character of Jesus. Another concept of the kingdom, I've said a lot of things this night another concept of the kingdom is that in the kingdom we don't own things owners are rebels the concept of ownership does not exist in the kingdom my thing that's not the language of kingdom in this kingdom the earth is the lord's he tells you clearly so don't ever claim it 
the earth is the Lord's. Now, as far as responsibility is concerned, you can say my thing. But the real idea is that in this kingdom, we do not have owners. We only have stewards. And moreover, it is required in stewards. The Bible says that a man be found faithful. Ownership is the secret of high blood pressure. Ownership is the secret of greed. When God designed that whoever owns a thing becomes responsible for maintaining it. So if you own your child, you own your business, you own your certificate, you see how hard it is to maintain things. But when you are a steward, you can find rest. Because you are a caretaker, you are a manager. Let the owner take responsibility. How do you know you are an owner? By who takes both the glory and the shame. Not the glory alone. I can't claim God is taking the glory and then I take the shame. No, whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. So now you are saying God takes the glory but your ego is being stung. So we are suspecting something there. Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. This is kingdom now. We are dealing with selfishness is the clearest proof of the absence of love. My definition of love is the absence of self. That's it. By any standard, if you define love that way, you are right. Love, in my definition and from scripture, is the absence of selfishness. You can measure the presence of love by the absence of selfishness. You can measure the absence of love by the presence of selfishness. More than emotions, the highest biblical index to measure love is the absence of self. It's true. Have you learned something this night? So the gospel of salvation, when we bring people, like I'll be making an altar call shortly, there are people who will come to Jesus when they are saved and they receive his life. They should not be left that way. From the foundation class to the teachings that come every week is a process of repentance. Submitting them to the body of truth that now begins to translate them. Not just as benefactors of the life of God but responsible believers. Now they begin to learn the ways of God. Now they begin to grow in understanding. Are we together now? This is very, very powerful. I made up my mind that I will never, never lead a people who are just born again and not relevant to society and not relevant to kingdom come. Relevance is more than ambition. No. You can have an ambition to be great because you came from a background of maybe poverty and you want to prove a point. That's too small a reason. You must give yourself a bigger motivation. Thy kingdom come. Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. In business, Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. You see that? This is where concepts, as you know, like the seven mountains come in now. When you now understand the concept of kingdom come, the administration of kingdom advance now will introduce concepts like the seven mountains, religion, education, etc., etc. Then it now begins to define the geography of your assignment. I'm called to be a professor. It does not matter. The geography does not matter. The most important thing is the belief system that supports you. So you are in a university as a vice chancellor, for instance. But you are not just there as one who just found passion for education. You are there to establish his kingdom. What is kingdom? His purpose is Christ revealed and enthroned. First in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. You are in business. You are not just a CEO. In oil and gas and business and real estate and all of that. No, you are there with intention. Protecting the interest of the kingdom. Protecting the interest of Christ. So as you make the profits, one billion, two billion, you are happy because you are making progress. Yes. 
you see because the key to fulfillment is progress but more than that you are happy that now you have resources for the kingdom and you can be God's treasurer with pride his last treasurer disappointed him he's still looking for many you can tell him oh God I can be trusted to fund nations and the Lord can speak to you you can trust God for grace he needs his healing power to come to the nations so that they don't think he's one of those gods and now he says can you be available and this is not just they will call you a man of God or a pastor or an apostle or an evangelist that that name that title is just the geography of your assignment you really are a witness now you are transformed and you have an assignment to see that Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified can we pray tonight and ask him to grant us grace please rise up on your feet thy kingdom come just two prayer points and we're done for tonight prayer point number one Lord I am available and I submit myself through repentance to the process that makes me like Christ in experience understanding his ways and being prepared to represent him please lift your voice and pray there's no doubt I am saved but I do not want to stop there there's no doubt I have given my life to Jesus but now I'm ready to be a responsible citizen of the kingdom are you praying? Now listen please Theologically speaking And When you look at it very critically When you get born again or saved you really don't give your life to Christ. Even though we generically say you give your life to Christ. But what really happens is you receive his life. You give your life to Christ at the point of service. It is the gospel of the kingdom that demands that you give your life to Christ. Are, are you understanding me? Now don't go around with this revelation fighting anyone. You'll find people say give your life to Christ. I may even use it now. But now you understand. In salvation you actually receive his life. But when you now surrender your life, that is for service. I'm saying that because we're going to pray. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours. It's yours forever. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. My money, my life, my time are in your hands. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Now this is the gospel of the kingdom. I do not own anything. It truly belongs to him. The wealth, the increase, the intellect. It is from him, by him, and for him. My relevance stems to the degree to which I contribute in seeing the nations come to their knees. Not just in terms of ministry alone. But seeing the governing influence of the father find expression. Listen to me. 
every one of you under the sound of my voice and you watching in your homes any part of the world you're following from it's important for you to understand that when we are born again we are saved not only to serve we are saved to represent to defend and promote the revelation of the Christ and the glorification of the same souls saved lives transformed society transformed it is the gospel of the kingdom that secures a territory it is the gospel of the kingdom that fights crimes the value system there is the gospel as the message that saves but there is the gospel as a value system that transforms both are required the message saves an individual the value system saves a nation you have to understand this if all you have is the message is personal it will save you you receive of the life of Jesus but we need to understand the value system called the gospel so that we can institutionalize the value system of the kingdom across every strata of human activities I'm going to make an altar call two altar calls in one you are here up here outside or following online and you're saying apostle in truth I do not remember making any genuine decision conscious decision for the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not I'm not aware that I've made such a decision even though I'm aware of the love of Jesus Christ but I've not made that decision number two you are here and you are saying apostle I love Jesus I remember giving my heart to him as you call it or receiving his life but sincerely at one point or the other my life just went haywire and I cannot allow this conference end without making this decision we do not have all the time but wherever you are I hope I'm allowed to do that wherever you are please I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain as we clap for them I'll count one to five don't allow anyone to come before you win that war come and stand here one Calvary Bible Church, are you celebrating salvation? Two. Three. Run to Jesus. You're coming from outside. Run. Run to Jesus. saved or you were lost you are still sitting and you say apostle i'm not bad but i'm not sure join them quickly we have just a minute for you there must come a point in your life when you will win this war i have decided to follow jesus no turning no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back everyone let's sing one time I have decided will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen to me my brothers and my sisters and those following online I salute you for making this noble decision can I tell you this rebels don't come to Jesus they run away from him so that you have come before him Jesus 
the one who died the father revealed his love when he gave Jesus it is true I really want to worship you my Lord you, you have won my heart and I am yours forever over this commission I like those of you in front Jesus is here I like you to lift your right hand high above your head as you pray this prayer let it be from the depth of your heart this singular decision will mean your eternal destiny or otherwise you have taken the first step to come out boldly you must take the next step to mean what you say and to only say what you mean say after me everyone say Lord Jesus say it again from the depth of your heart Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you love me I believe that you came and died for me I believe that you went to the grave you resurrected for my justification tonight consciously and willingly I declare that Jesus is my Savior is my Lord and my King I receive forgiveness of sin I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight and forever I belong to Jesus I go forward ever and backward never amen and amen keep those hands lifted father we present to you the ones Jesus died for it's an honor to present these ones as trophies to you we thank you according to the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that you are benefactors of the life of god i commend you to the ministry of the word i commend you to the ministry of the holy spirit may you be built may you be established the power of sin the power of satan the power of the grave is broken over your life from today until forever you walk in the newness of life in jesus name i pray amen and amen okay now all of you as we celebrate them all of you in concert just follow the counselors they are waving their hands they are waving their hands celebrate them as they go please celebrate them as they go are you still clapping celebrate them as they go Just a word and I'm back to my seat. Just like Pastor said, by the grace of God, I'm still here tomorrow morning. I hope that somewhere, um, somewhere as we teach, we'll have the opportunity to just pray and speak over people. This is a kingdom conference. Many of you are coming not just to hear, but to receive. I'd like you to come with your hearts open. Uh, there is no sacrifice that is too much to make it here tomorrow so that you can receive i believe that this will be one conference that will be an encounter between you and the lord so pay whatever price in righteousness it will take to be seated no matter the sacrifice if there is no space even if you have to stay outside no matter the sacrifice let your heart be open to receive one thing for sure is that this conference will not end leaving you disappointed therefore the lord bless you and the lord honor you let this revelation become a reality in your life. From tonight, the Holy Spirit breathes upon this word. It turns you into a sign and even a wonder. 
in Jesus name I pray dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 